War, devastating, deadly, and chaotic. Art, inspirational, expressive, and emotional. What happens when the two collide? Picasso demonstrates this to us in various paintings. On Monday, April 26, 1937, war planes of the German Condor Legion, commanded by Colonel Wolfram von Richthofen, bombed Guernica for about two hours. Approximately 10,000 people were killed. This horrific event inspired Picasso to paint one of his most famous works, the Guernica. The painting shows the tragedies of war and how it affects individuals, mainly those considered innocent civilians. Picasso decided to paint the picture in grayscale to show the somberness, pain, and chaos during this time. The broken sword at the bottom of the painting represents defeat at the hand of the tormentors. Picasso would eventually find himself facing other tragedies of war that would add inspiration to his works. During World War II, Picasso stayed in Paris while the Germans occupied the city. Picasso's art style did not fit the Nazi idea of art, and he was often harassed by them. During one search of his apartment, an officer saw the photograph of the painting Garnica. Did you do that? The German asked Picasso. No, he replied. You did. During the war, materials for sculpture were severely limited, and Picasso worked with anything at hand, including pieces of wood, bones, wine bottle caps, scraps of paper, cigarette packs, and even a bicycle saddle with handlebars used to create a lifelike head of a bull. When canvas was not available, he painted on planks and hardboard, or as can be seen in Head of a Woman, on newspaper, where the stark black outlines seemed to echo the austerity and bleakness of war-torn pair. Picasso's instance on responding to the present rather than working in a strictly developmental manner is evident in his paintings of the time, which have an eerie presence. Cat seizing a bird depicts a self-satisfied cat triumphantly gripping a defenseless bird, its flesh torn to reveal a gaping wound. Another painting he created was Head of a Woman, a grimacing, haunted skull with clenched teeth set against the background of menacing grace, it seems to epitomize the essence of death and the defeat of France. In August 1944, as German tanks rolled out of Paris and the city was liberated, Picasso was visited by a constant stream of friends and admirers, all delighted to discover that he was still alive. The Charnel House in 1945, which was one of his most political paintings since the Guernica. This painting deals with the Nazi genocide and the Holocaust and was based on a short documentary film about a Spanish Republican family who was murdered in their kitchen. Picasso was vocally anti-war and especially anti-fascist, and he did not agree with Hitler's views on war. Picasso's war-based artwork didn't stop after World War II. In 1951, he painted Massacre in Korea, which is seen as a criticism of American intervention in the Korean War. It depicts the 1950s Sinchon Massacre, an act of mass killing carried out by North Koreans, South Koreans, or American forces in the town of Sinchon. Although the actual cause of the murders in Sinchon is in question, Massacre in Korea appears to depict them as civilians being killed by anti-communist forces. The art critic Kirsten Hoving Keen says that it is inspired by reports of American atrocities and considers it one of Picasso's communist works. Massacre in Korea, the Guernica, head of a woman and other paintings tell the story of how Picasso incorporated his emotions from the wrath of the wars into his artwork. 